Alrighty. Scrapyard run action. What I've got here is some various scrap metals. I like making these videos from time to time, give out information to people who might need to uh, make a little extra money. I'm gonna get it spread out here and run through it real quick with you. And grab some of their handy dandy buckets I got over here. I think they've got a spare bucket or two I might borrow for a minute. What do you think? Some rainwater in here. Do them a favor and get rid of next week's mosquitoes. Okay, so most scrapyards will want you to be ready when you show up, but uh, the scrapyard doesn't mind if I pull in like this. Get this done real quick. Little fan motor on there that came out of a car. It's just gonna go as tin shed. See, it's got all that plastic all over it. You can clean it if you want to take the time. It's not that big of a difference in price these days. Okay, I'm gonna get a bucket for cans over here. Bucket for aluminum here. Most scrapyards will have a separate category for foil. I just have that one piece. So I'm just going to throw it in with my aluminum. Look at that short steel here. That's its own category. It's going to be a little bit more valuable than tin shed. Steel will just be a clean, solid, thick ferrous where tin shed will have other materials like that brake pad, plastic. This is aluminum breakage. It's got tin and aluminum. So it's gonna go as aluminum breakage category. garbage disposal usually those will be aluminum I'm not sure about that one it's actually got a plastic case around it we'll see what they want to do that might just be tin shirt actually Let's see what they think up there tin shirt on the toaster oven so you can find this stuff it's all over the place if you really look for it you can find a lot of this dumpster diving and trash picking okay I've got these aluminum pots and pans here most scrapyards will give you a dirty or a uh, breakage aluminum for this because they got the handles on them this scrapyard isn't that picky they'll probably give me clean aluminum for those
how I took the handle off that one. That's how most scrap bears will want them. They probably won't even allow that piece of metal right there, that piece of tin and a little steel screw. That's another piece of short steel. Actually, that's a cast iron. I think they'll go short steel on that. And then a uh, piece of brass. That's out of the bottom of a sink. That's a piece of brass. Some scrap yards might call that dirty brass. Um, Cause that's the knob is brass, but on this side it's a bunch of tin. So I might go tin shred. I'll see what they want to do with it. Some doorknobs have more than brass than others. This was the post off of a patio umbrella, table umbrella. I could have scrapped the rest of that umbrella, but uh, I was just kind of making a video that day. These cords, extension cords are basically my beans and potatoes that's basically my number one scrap item the cords off of fans off of vacuum cleaners off of televisions off of toaster oven off of anything they're gonna be worth money most scrap yards will want you to cut off plugs i get a lot of questions about the plugs where i live there is no category for plugs scrap yards don't even want them they say if I don't have very many, just throw them in, in with the tin. So there it is. Okay. Get a handy dandy little bucket for the wire. say to yourself those were really nice extension cords they were worth a lot of money why well, just scrap them but scrap you'll see scrappers scrap a lot of stuff like that I find these time and time again I have no use for them it's just uh, just going to the scrap yard sure you can sell them if you want to people do different things if you want to hang on to stuff but uh, there's a reason why scrappers scrap a lot of good stuff is because they they come across a lot of good stuff. There's really nothing you can do about it. If you want to uh, rent out a, a, a airplane hangar to store everything, you could do that, I suppose. But I've learned that buzzsaw mode is the best mode for me. Get, get rid of stuff. See how much good stuff I get rid of. Those sandwich makers and stuff. This ninja food processor and extension cards. There'll be comments saying you should keep that and you're stupid and blah blah blah. But then there'll be other comments saying <laughs> you're stupid because you're storing so much stuff in storage. Get rid of it. So <clears throat> it's one spectrum to the, to the next, you know. I have a storage unit where I'd put loads of stuff in and just give it away for free. And I still i am overwhelmed with stuff. So on these, there's nice aluminum plates that come out of there fairly easily. Just a couple of screws. These aluminum plates are not bad. how I'm doing on time it's gonna close here pretty quick but uh that's it we're gonna go see how much this is all worth
Farkle. Have a look at these prices. So the number two insulated copper wire, those copper cores I was showing, the 70 cents a pound. That's not a bad price. Considering copper itself, clean copper is at 215. Uh, brass dollar 20. Gotta make my thumbnail for my video. What do you think? That's not too bad. Something along them lines. What do you think about that? Run down this for you real quick. Okay, we had 25 pounds of short steel at five cents a pound for a dollar twenty-five. That was those rotors and that base off that lamp. Two uh one pound of clean aluminum cans for 35 cents. 29 pounds of aluminum breakage at a nickel for 40 uh dollar 45 <coughs> one pound brass a dollar 20 one pound clean aluminum 25 cents and all those pots and pans i said this yard's lenient on and they'll count as clean aluminum they actually gave me breakage so uh that was up here in the 29 i got five cents so uh Sometimes they'll do things differently at the same yard, so you always gotta be prepared for that. 21 pounds 10, 63 cents. And this is my bean and potatoes down here. It's my Steady Eddy, number two insulated copper wire, 15 pounds, 70 cents a pound for $10.50, a grand total of 15.63. But uh, you'd be amazed. So if you go to a scrap yard where you live for the first time or first couple times, Anything you see on YouTube might be basically irrelevant. It's all going to depend on how your scrapyard does stuff and scrapyards do things totally different Scrapyards in the same city will do things totally different They might even have different names for the categories and blah 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 yada 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 so that's not a ton of money, but I just had one little load and uh, Scrapping is not gonna make you rich unless you own a scrapyard I suppose but uh My keys better be in my coat pocket that I took off, I can tell you that much. There they are. But it is a good way to get cash in hand right away if you need to do that. If it's made of metal, a scrapyard will want it. Even if it's got wood and plastic and junk stuck to it, if it contains metal, generally they will buy it from you. Uh, so with those pots and pans, I'm in the habit of not cleaning them up when I can come to the scrapyard. But those were some pretty big chunky steel handles and stuff. So uh, cleaning stuff up like that will get you a little more money. But a lot of people that aren't full-time scrappers you might be in a hurry you might have to get to work or school or pick up the kids or do something else you might just not have time to do stuff so clean it clean and scrap metal up will will increase the value but it does take time so anything you don't have to clean stuff up i guess i'm getting to the point too some people just don't have time to do that kind of stuff so you can just take it straight to the scrap yard without doing anything if you uh have the luxury of time you can make more money scrapping cleaning stuff up like that um anyways i think you get the point i sure hope you enjoyed this little session i hope at least one person out there is going to make a few extra dollars because of this video as always thanks for watching